I think it's time we had a talk about our living fence. So about five years ago, we planted these arborvitaes here because the fact that the city would not allow us to have a fence. When we moved to this property, we didn't realize that because there was a road on two sides, we have a corner lot, that that gave us two front yards. It's really strange the way the law is written. And because the law is written that you can't have a fence in your front yard, when we went to apply for a fence permit, um, the, the city declined it because of the fact that we have two front yards and you're not allowed to have a fence in your front yard, which makes absolutely no sense, but it kind of, and by the way the law is written, you could see how they could have, a, uh, have an argument there. Now, our argument to them was, well, how are we supposed to have you know, privacy and security? How are we supposed to prevent against a burglar? Because if you have a fence, you are two times less likely to be burglarized. Um, if you have a fence, you know, there's a natural barrier there uh, for a child not to run into the street. We had a, you know, a, a, a small child and we knew that we'd be living here for quite some time. So you know, when she grows up, we didn't want our daughter to just be running into the street because it's a very busy street. So it's more safe to have a little barrier there, but then also because of privacy. You know, when I film videos, there have been numerous times where uh, people that are viewers of the show, you know, nothing against, nothing against the viewers of the show, but we've had people that, you know, see me and they lay on the horn and they honk and they yell and that's great. But it's sometimes nice that, you know, when I'm not filming, when I'm not necessarily in am I gardener mode, that I can sit out there with my family and not have people, you know, uh, shouting and hooting and hollering at me because um, it just makes me kind of feel like there's a spotlight on me. You know, I enjoy that privacy just like anybody else does. I'm a human just like anybody else is. And so offense provided us a lot of different things. Now, don't get me wrong. I like a neighborhood with very few fences. I actually prefer it. But in certain circumstances, it would be beneficial. Even a chain link fence would have been beneficial because of the fact that it would provide at least the safety component that I was most concerned about. The privacy was kind of a, a benefit, but the safety was my main concern. But when we filled out the permit, the city declined it, and we went to appeal to them, you know, our reasoning, and they said, doesn't matter, because if you do it, we have to offer variances to everybody else that wants them. So. What I did was I looked into the law and I kind of just, I got a little vengeful, I'll be honest. I got a little vengeful. And I looked up and I, uh, I looked up, you know, the, the fencing regulations, which did say that they, if you had them, they could not be any uh, taller than six feet. They could not uh, be in your front yard. And that is all they said. So when I looked at um, planting out uh, landscaping, I looked at landscaping regulations and there was nothing that said that you could not plant a row of trees. And that's how we ended up with a living fence. Now, I gotta be honest, this has been one of the nicest things I've ever added to our house besides our garden. This thing is absolutely beautiful and I get compliments on it all the time. I've had so many people riding their bikes and walking along here that when I'm out either mowing or maintaining the garden, they ask me, uh, you know, how much it costs to do this and, um, and who did it. And I said, you know, I told them who did it for us. We hired a we hired, actually hired a professional landscaping company to, uh, to put the trees in because there's a lot of trees to plant. That's a lot of trees to plant. And, um, and so uh, I told them you know, what we got and who did it and stuff like that. And people really have responded well to it. Now, are there some things that I would do differently? Well, let's talk about that. So is there anything that I do differently? Absolutely. There's one thing that I would do differently and that's plant them just a little bit closer together. As you can see, even after five years, going on six years, you can still see clear into my backyard. That's after six years. Now, arborvitaes do grow fairly quickly. That's one of the benefits. However, the variety that we chose is known as Emerald King. And Emerald King uh, grows really fat at the bottom and then kind of tapers up and it stops at about 10 to 12 feet. It's a semi-dwarf or kind of a, like a determined height arborvitae. It does not get 20, 30 feet tall per my agreement that I would not, you know, that I would not have stuff growing into our utility lines. So it does cap out about 10 to 12 feet and does get fairly wide at the bottom. However, I didn't realize how long it would take to get to full size. We basically told the, the landscaper that planted these, we said, I want to plant them at a, basically at a distance apart that when they're fully mature, they're basically just going to be touching. So that it wasn't just, it didn't look too crowded. However, uh, in hindsight, I didn't realize that at fully mature, uh, fully mature size, that can take seven to 10 years. So it's gonna be a little bit before these start touching, and it'll be a little bit before we have our, kind of the fence that we're looking for. 
Now that being said, we do have, <clears throat> there you go. There's a viewer of the show. <laughs> I don't know if you heard that honk. It's, uh, we're pretty well known here in our, in our neighborhood. Everybody knows who I am. I'm always out here filming and so I draw a lot of attention, but people don't usually have situational awareness when I bring a camera out that it ruins audio and totally messes up my, my, my train of thought. But, um, gosh, where was I at? Um, crap. So, you know, even though they are filling out, they do look really, really nice. I like the fact that when we planted them, we actually got, uh, we got them at about four feet tall. And as you can see, they're a little bit over my head now, meaning they're a little bit taller than six foot three. So the fact that they've grown about two, two and a quarter feet or so in five years is, is pretty impressive. They're not like the world's fastest growing variety, but they look really nice. They're nice and thick. They're nice and dense. So they, um, they don't have a lot of shaggy, a lot of shaggy limbs and things like that that flop all over the place. They're really nice and, and kind of taut and firm and they, they hold their shape really well, which I love for a fence. So that's the only thing that I'd really would do differently is, um, is just plant them a little closer together. I went, uh, so when we, when we planted them, we spaced them out, uh, three feet on center and I would have probably gone about two and a half feet on center. That extra half a foot would make all the difference because yes, we would have had to buy maybe two or three more trees to fill in the row, but they would have filled in so much faster and we really would have achieved that natural living fence that we were looking for. Another thing to consider, one's the die. You are gonna have some losses. We lost two trees, we almost lost a third, but we were able to actually kind of uh, nurse it back to, to life and it's about the same height as this one here, that short one. And so because of the fact you are gonna have some losses, those losses don't happen all at once. You might lose a tree one year and then the rest keep growing and you have to replant and things like that. So that will end up with some, some spottiness. But by and large, as you can see, it looks really, really good. I mean, most of them are the same height with, with very little variation. Now, you will notice that some get huge in the back there. And that's because of another thing to consider when you're planting your living fence, and that is how much water they get. So arborvitaes are a cedar, and cedar trees love wet soil, not wet soil, but they like consistent moisture. They like a nice, uh, really well irrigated soil. Now, the way that our property line actually slopes is it slopes uh, down. Our neighbor's property is higher than ours is, so all of their water from their sprinkler system runs down all of our water because ours kind of sloughs off. So we get, there's a lot of dry, uh, dry soil because of the fact that the, the water naturally will move towards the street and theirs comes down onto our property. So the trees back there get a ton of water and they've like doubled the amount of growth that our other ones have because our other ones, we don't have a sprinkler system here. So either we hand water them or they get rainwater. That's about it but because they have a sprinkler system, they get a ton of water. And so if you have like low spots or high spots, keep that in mind that that is going to kind of fluctuate the height of your living fence and it's gonna give you a little bit of spotty results. But all that being said, again, still really impressed with how it looks and just how, I mean, it looks pretty clean and just how, uh, how nice it's gonna look when it's all fully grown. All right, and finally, two last benefits to a living fence that I think is worth mentioning just from our experience. And the first one is the biggest benefit and one that I, I didn't really realize until they started to grow up and fill out and things like that. And that was a windbreak. Because we don't have any neighbors or things to the south of us, um, the wind really comes through like a wind tunnel. And just, I mean, it gets super, super windy through our property. And since we added these, these trees here, as they've grown up and filled out, they act as a wonderful windscreen that we can actually sit even 20, 30 feet away, and it is way less windy. Right now, I'm on the other side, I'm on the south side of our living fence, and I'm just getting pelted by really cold wind. But when I did that previous shot on the inside of our living fence, I could barely feel it. It's really surprising how much wind uh, gets cut down from this living fence here, and it's only gonna get better as they continue to grow up and fill out. The second and final benefit that I thought I'd mention is huge, and that is noise, uh, noise dampening. The noise dampening components of a living fence is something that you can 
only experience when you, uh, when you live on a noisy street. Like I said, this street is very, very busy. It's a main thoroughfare to connect two towns, so a lot of people use this as a shortcut rather than go the long way, obviously. It's the most direct route between two towns, and because of that, it's very, very noisy. The living fence has cut down on our noise by, I would estimate, between 25 and 30%, and that's still while there's a lot of gaps and holes and things like that. It is really surprising how much more quiet it makes it. Even like I said, out here, out in the open, the, no the road is, is very loud. Just on the inside of it, because there's so much, uh, so much foliage blocking the road, it quiets it down tremendously. It's so surprising. And like I said, that's only gonna get better as that foliage grows up, fills out, the, pl uh, the trees get taller and things like that. So huge, huge benefits to a living fence. I would recommend anybody do it. The final thing that I thought I'd mention, because this has been asked a lot, is uh, fertilizing. Do we fertilize? We fertilize once a year. We fertilize with a high nitrogen fertilizer because we want to get them growing and, uh, and growing quickly. Do we water? Uh, we rarely water. Um, like I said, we, we only water because we have to water it by hand with a hose. It's kind of an inconvenience. So we rarely water this. We do mulch it pretty heavily to hold in and lock in that moisture, but we rarely water them now. We did when we first planted them. We watered them about two or three times a week, but once they got rooted in and established, we really don't, don't water at all. And then I know the final question is, how much did it cost you? So the total cost for this living fence is gonna shock you. Um, to build a six foot tall privacy fence, we got quotes for that, that was quoted about $4,500. The trees, uh, all these arborvitaes, only cost us $3,600. So it actually saved us money in the long run, and though we have to wait for it to fill out, it's gonna give us a better result in the long run. So I'm super happy about this. This is really a wonderful investment. It's something that I'd recommend anybody do, especially if you've got the space, especially if you can't have a fence. This is a fantastic investment for you to put in. And like I said, it looks great. The amount of compliments we get is, uh, is off the charts. So I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope you learned something new. Let me know if you guys have planted a living fence and, and uh, your thoughts on it. And uh, we'll catch you all later. All right, grow big or go home, everyone. Take care.